everyone welcome back and today you're going to see a PowerPoint with a black background and that means it is a PowerPoint about thinking and you know very well that as much as I like to teach food science I like to think about systems I like to think about adult education and I like to think about thinking processes and share that journey with you because you are a learner you, just the fact that you are here on this YouTube channel means that you want to learn something and thinking about how you learn and how you might be encouraging other people in your community to be learning with you is a really important skill. Um, many of the students who study with me at Niagara College are in the food technology program and they go on to leadership roles in supervision or in management in food manufacturing and you will be leading teams and as such you are out there helping people do their best work and you have to be a bit of an educator in that in that role and function and in other cases you might be just working within your own community maybe you've got kids and you've got to motivate them to uh, do studying online or or just maybe you need to Think about how do you motivate yourself when having to do online learning. I know I've had lots of great conversations with people saying it's been so hard to be motivated when you have to study online. And so I thought let's let's do a little bit of a deep dive into understanding motivation and really think about some of the psychological science behind it and think about some of the different strategies that we can use. So at the end of this video, you'll be able to define models of motivation, including Ikigai and Autotelic Principles. And we'll discuss different types of human motivation, internal and external, positive and negative, and their role in personal success. So today, oh, it's not W Edwards, damning. We have uh, Mikhail Chiks at Mikhail. Yeah, if you're taking a look at how his name is spelled, that's, um, that's a Hungarian name. And uh, Mikhail Csikszent Mihai was a, he actually is still alive, he's a psychologist and he was a professor at the University of Chicago and he uh, did a lot of research in psychology and in particular did a lot of work in understanding human motivation. And so our starting quote for today will be from Dr. Csikszent Mihai. So, to overcome the anxieties and depressions of contemporary life, individuals must become independent of the social environment to the degree that they no longer respond exclusively in terms of its rewards and punishments. To achieve such autonomy, a person has to learn to provide rewards to herself. She has to develop the ability to find enjoyment and purpose, regardless of external circumstances. And that quote came from um, Chiksat Mirchai's book flow the psychology of optimal experience and it, it just really resonates right now with covid and so many students having to study at home and alone and feeling isolated from the whole environment and not really having a sense of why am i doing this and what's my purpose and how does this connect to the reality of what i want to do in the future um it's hard it's really hard and i and as we were going through this slide presentation, I want to encourage you to think about why do you want to study and what is that um, internal purpose that's keeping you going? Because it's hard right now. How, how can you keep that fire going inside of you? So I mentioned Ikigai, and Ikigai has been written up uh, quite a bit in um, the literature, um, both within the scientific literature, but all, more so in the in the pop culture literature, but the, the concept of Ikigai comes from Japan. And um, there, were, uh, there was a book written, and uh, that book was written by Hector Garcia and Francis Morales. And I jumped ahead because I was pulling a blank for a moment of Hector Garcia's name. Um, they wrote up this book and they had gone to Japan uh, looking at the people of Okinawa. Okinawa is well known as a, what's known as a blue zone. And the blue zones are these global areas where people tend to live a really, really, really long life. And the people of Okinawa are some of the oldest 
people with, with some of the highest aged people in the world. And they, they went and interviewed these people to say, well, what keeps you going? And they said, well, we have Ikigai. It's this Japanese concept that you have a sense of purpose. And as they delved into it a little bit further, they found that it was a balancing act between being able to um, have, a, have an ability to do what you are good at. And so often young people have skills that uh, they're very good at something. You, you need to be able to earn money so that you have a livelihood, so that you can pay the bills and have a roof over your head and, and so on. And so there's that balancing act between those two. You want to do what you love and enjoy the, the, that purpose of going to work every day. And you also want to have something that the world needs. And so it's all very good if you have something that you are good at, but if the world doesn't really need that skill, then it's a bit of a hobby per se. This diagram is, is a fun uh, original diagram by Mark Wynn and Dan Butner. Um, there's a few different diagrams that are floating around, but the idea behind Ikigai is if you are able to balance what you are good at, what earns you money, what you love, and what the world needs, you found that Ikigai. And what's fantastic about working with people in the food industry is that there are a lot of jobs available, so it's quite possible to earn a decent living. The, when we find students who really are passionate about what they're doing and just are so enthusiastic about food, that also really balances. Fundamentally, the world needs food. And what we can do is help people find the skills so that you can be good at it and become even better at it. So I, I just like to think about this model because... Students who come and are really enthusiastic about, about the food industry, that what you love segment, we can help with the what you are good at and help them become even better at what they're doing. Because those what, uh, earning money and what the world needs naturally comes from the food industry. Now, there is additional aspects to the Ikigai model. And the idea is that it's a, it, it was originally... Uh, posited as a as a model for longevity so that how do you how do you have sustainability in your career and and part of me wants to say we need those same skills of sustainability not just so that you can live to be 110 years old like the people of Okinawa but so that you can make it through this semester we need those same aspects of longevity and sustainability right now and so while these rules were were, were written with retirees in mind I want, to, I want to suggest that right now, while you're dealing with COVID at home and trying to study, these are ways of helping keep your sense of purpose and motivation. So one is stay active and don't retire. So keep doing things, get physically active, do stuff. Take it slow. You don't have to, like, you don't have to rush through things. I realize that you may have deadlines, but think of this as a long-term journey. Don't fill your stomach. That one's, that one's funny because, again... Um, and many times the research on blue zones said that the people who lived in these blue zones um, never gorged themselves and ate uh, like gluttons. They always would eat and be mindful about the food that they were eating. Um, surround yourself with friends. And I realize in COVID that may be more difficult, but connect with friends on the telephone or through FaceTime or through... Um, I found fun of sending letters to people, old-fashioned letters, um, just because it gave a sense of surprise and, and purpose. Get in shape, do some exercise, smile, so find something that makes you happy and, and, and do it, whether that's uh, taking some time to read a book or uh, do a hobby. Find something that gives you a bit of joy that's going to balance against the stresses of work and the stresses of school. Reconnect with nature, get outside. If we may be in lockdown, but you're not barred from walking outside in your neighborhood even if it's just a walk around your block. Uh, be thankful for the things that you do have. I realize it may be hard, and some people may be under financial stress, but do reach out and realize that there's a community around you who wants to help you. Live in the moment and follow your ikigai. So do, do take some time to reflect on that. We do have some more concepts coming up here, but uh, one, of the, one of the concepts that uh, uh, Csikszentmihalyi uh, developed was the concept of 
autotelix, the idea of having a sense of purpose or an internal goal that allows for internal motivation. And what do we mean by internal motivation? Well, let's jump forward here. In many cases, motivation comes from outside of yourself. And oftentimes when I'm working with, um, with young students, oftentimes they're high school students who are coming on recruiting days or they're um, at the different open houses, in some cases virtual open houses, they'll be there with their parents. And oftentimes the parents will come and talk to me and they'll say, hey, I want my, I want my son, I want my daughter, I want my, I want my young person here to uh, join your program. And I'll say, hey, you know what? Young person, come on over here, you talk to me. And oftentimes there is external motivation to join a program. Uh, I've had lots of conversations with parents through the years where they say, well, I think this is a great opportunity for my son or daughter or my, my young person here that they they should join this program because there's so many jobs. And, and I'm like, but do they want to join this program? That internal motivation? And I'll say, you know what, I want to have I want to have a conversation directly with this young person to make sure that they're is excited. It's not the parent who's taking the course. But that said, sometimes external motivation is a real positive. Sometimes um, external motivation, um, a bit of positive peer pressure, um, advice from your parents or from guidance counselors or from success advisors at the college, from professors and so on. Sometimes external motivation can help you uh, move along. Now, uh, motivation can be positive, where it gives you pleasure, or it can be negative, where you are avoiding avoiding pain. And I'm going to jump into some examples of each of these different types of motivation, but um, Chisit Mikhai said that people who are uh, more successful in life and in their careers tend to have a strong component of internal motivation. And so these are the people who can find the drive when all other things are difficult to be able to pick themselves up and uh, reorient themselves towards success. Um, that said, there's nothing wrong with well-structured external motivations. And let's jump into some examples here. Oh, external positive motivation. This is a photo of a falafel sandwich. And this is a bit of an inside joke for uh, some of the professors that I am friends with. We were chatting online and one professor said to me, you know what? I have been giving myself an external positive motivation. I will not treat myself to a falafel sandwich until I have posted all of my first week courses online. And I said, can I use that in my slideshow? And she said, yes. Um, but the idea of giving yourself a positive reward when you have completed a difficult task. And in this case, um, my friend said, I'm going to do this task. I know I need to do it. It's not enjoyable, but I'm going to reward myself. So it's it, it's external to herself, and it was something that made her feel good about herself. Um, internal positive motivation. This is where you're not necessarily uh, having tangibles, but instead you have a sense of pride or a sense of joy from completing something. Uh, I have this image of these two guys patting themselves on the back, um, but that aspect of I don't need validation from anything outside of me. I just know that I did it and it makes me happy. Um, it's, a, it's a distinctive difference between rewarding yourself with tangible things or having praise from other people like your mom or your, your partner or your, your siblings or your best friend coming along and saying, you did a great job, versus telling yourself, hey, you did a great job. Um, is a very distinctive difference between that internal messaging versus external messaging. About external negative motivation, and I have an image here of a, of a man yelling in a megaphone at a small guy going, ah, <laughs> in this tiny chair, but external negative motivation, um, this is where you're looking at punishments. So if, um, if I don't do this task, I can't have this, or I am going to force myself to do extra work, or um, I think of different work environments where people don't do a task and then they're assigned even more work. Let's say, for example, 
I've seen this in restaurants where uh, someone makes a mistake and they have to then go work dish pit for half an hour to make up the difference for um, the mistake that they made. Well, that's an external negative motivation. And the idea behind it is that if you have these punishments that occur because of behaviors, that they will prevent you from doing that behavior in the future. And when done strategically, it can be good. But in general, um, using punishment as a motivator is, it drives out internal motivation. It drives out wanting that sense of purpose. Um, and internal negative motivation is very common too, where people have doubts or fears or they lack the confidence that they can do these different skills. Um, if you're interested, think about the zones of proximal development. And if you haven't watched that YouTube video, I highly recommend that you look that one up on the same channel. But the idea is that at school, we should be giving you challenges that we feel are feasible and tangible within your skill set. And so often students will have internal negative motivation where they say, I can't do this. This is too hard. I am, I am, I'm not as smart as I think I am. Oh man, I can't do this. Versus the fact that as teachers, we have to externally motivate you to do it. And it's, it's, it's really, really hard right now. We don't have all of those cues where we come together and we're able to get together and I can say, hey, you know what, I see the effort that you're putting in there and I'm really proud of the effort that you're trying to do. It's hard for me to see you through the interwebs and, and give you that same encouragement. I try through my videos, but it, it sometimes falls flat. Um, internal negative motivation is always there. And those of you who've been following along this channel, I, I know that I'm a, a big follower of uh, w. Edwards Deming and one of his 14 points of management talks about the fact that within organizations we want to make sure that there's not a, a sense of fear and a sense of dread behind potential punishments or potential uh, negative outcomes from, from the work that we do. Um, neg internal negative motivation often is just self-created and it takes a lot of effort. Um, in some cases, people have legitimate anxiety, and uh, sometimes it's it's circumstantial anxiety. In other cases, it's it's a legitimate thing. If at any point in time you are really really feeling anxious, and you're uh, reach out, talk to people, find people that you trust who you can have a conversation with. If you're in my class, reach out to me, and we can help you find strategies to deal with this. N internal negative motivation is a real thing, and within my classes, I really want to try and emphasize the fact that I want to create an environment where we are positive and we are driving out fear that we can come in and try our best and find the encouragement and find the means so that we can continue to do our best. This is a model uh, uh, that I've just brought up. It's a, it's a graphic of different quadrants that uh, uh, Mihai Chiksit Mihai uh, created and the idea along this x-axis along the bottom is that there's a starts at a low skill level towards a high skill level and along the y-axis the up and down axis we start with a low challenge level towards a high challenge level and Jixit Mihai wanted to talk about the concept of flow that when people are really in a space where they are able to apply their skill and be challenged effectively they are going to move into the state of optimal internal motivation or what he termed flow. So if you don't need a lot of skill and it's not very challenging, you're likely going to be apathetic or bored. Whereas if the skill level that's needed is high, but it's not very challenging, it can be relaxing. Um, so oftentimes, for example, people enjoy adult coloring books um, and they find it relaxing to be able to do that. Or um, knitting or doing uh, jigsaw puzzles. The challenge level is reasonably low, uh, but you need some skill to be able to do it. The more challenge though that you have, the more control that you need and the more capability you have to move into a space of flow. Now, if you have a low skill level, but the challenge is high, you can move into that space of anxiety. And that's where as teachers, we need to make sure that we're giving you um, assignments and tasks that are gradual in terms of changing this challenge level so that yes we may be giving you a bit of worry and we may be giving you a little bit of anxiety but if you're really in that point where you're going ah I don't know what to do please make sure to reach out and talk to your instructors um, 
is we want to give you some challenge and move your zone of proximal development so that you're able to take on more challenges and more complex um, tasks and more complex projects. But we don't want to drive you into a space of anxiety where you completely just stop working. So as we come to the end of this show here, uh, so Mihai checks at Mihai's factors that drive motivation. He talks about challenge skill balance. So we just we just described that diagram where you need to make sure that you're challenging yourself just enough and that you're continually working on improving your skills so that you can keep that motivation up. You want to make sure that you're merging your uh, actions and awareness. So it's so easy to fall into a space of inertia. Inertia is just where you just don't want to move. You don't want to do anything. You need to keep moving step forward at a time. And even if that's just as simple as making a to-do list and being able to cross off a couple things from that to-do list on any given day, that aspect of action and being aware of your action is really important. You want to have clear goals and aims. And so your instructors should be giving you clear expectations of what they want you to do in your classes and moving forward in your life from a career perspective, you want to know this is what I want to do with myself because it helps you continue to be motivated. I realize that those of you who are perhaps in first year, you may not know what you want to do with yourself, but that's that's the fun of, of adult education. You get to explore a lot of different things. And once you find what your goal is, then really uh, focus in on that. Having clear feedback on your progress is also important, and I want to reinforce that those of you who are at Niagara College, you should have the expectation that you can talk to your teachers at any point in time. I realize that with uh, online learning, sometimes getting your uh, assignments back in a timely fashion may not be exactly the way you expect it. Um, and in other cases, uh, it's difficult for your instructors to deal with plagiarism. And so they may not be sending you back full answer sets because some students may be out of sequence, but you are always, always, always encouraged to talk to your instructors and they should be giving you clear feedback on what you need to do to continue your journey and keep learning. Um, it's difficult sometimes uh, within a motivating environment to be able to concentrate on the task at hand. And so being able to find a workspace where you can be free of distractions is important. I realize that many of you may not have ideal working situations where maybe you're sharing housing with other people or um, maybe you don't have a fancy desk or an office, but find something that works for you. Do you need to get um, sound blocking headphones? I, I realize that some of the fancy, the fancy electronic ones are notoriously expensive, but is it as simple as buying some earplugs at the pharmacy? Um, what else can help you concentrate? Um, finding that space. In some cases, people will need to take frequent breaks to be able to help concentrate. So do you need to uh, get up and walk around the room or uh, take a walk around the block in your neighborhood to be able to re-motivate yourself and um, give yourself blocks of time when you need to just focus and not be distracted by social media or other things. You do need to have a sense of control. And I realize that within um, online courses and online learning, it can feel really nebulous. And so do make sure to communicate with your teachers about what's expected at any point in time. And if you are feeling that things are out of control, make sure to have that line of communication available. Um, Mihai Csikszentmihalyi talks about flow as a, as a concept that, uh, um, moving towards these end ones here, he says that when you're in a really good state of internal motivation and flow, that sometimes you can just lose a sense of time. And I know um, this. May <laughs> I like to think about <laughs> think about some of the assignments and hope that there's that motivating that you you lose all track of time and self consciousness when you're doing that work. Um, more often than not, the work that we're doing in these assignments doesn't have you lose that sense of flow. But when when you have it, it's a magical thing. You know that you're doing something that you really enjoy and that you really have that sense of purpose. And I'm sure you've all done it at some point where you've 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 done something that you are enjoying yourself and you are challenging yourself and you are really pushing it such that you you lose that track of time and you lose that sense of self for a short period of time that's that ideal autotelic experience i can't i can't say that it's always going to be that magical way um but when you're in that space that's when you usually are doing your best work Oh my gosh, it's W. Edwards Deming. <laughs> you knew he was going to show up. Um, 
W. Edwards Deming wrote a lot about motivation and spoke a lot about it and there are some videos on YouTube from the Deming Institute where he talks about motivation and I highly encourage you to look those up. I just happened to pick one quote to uh, lead us towards the closing on this talk. Uh, one is born with intrinsic motivation, self-esteem, dignity, cooperation, curiosity, and a yearning for learning. These attributes are high at the beginning of life, but are gradually crushed out, diminished year by year throughout life. Crushed out by the forces of destruction along the top, the forces of destruction build up these undesirable qualities. Characteristics listed here and crush out the ones one is born with. Why crush them out? Why not nurture them? Mere change will not help. You cannot remodel a prison. And so those of you who have followed along in some of the uh, higher level courses know that we do a lot of work in uh, following uh, Deming's development of the different quality analysis tools used in manufacturing systems. But he was a great theorist about adult education and learning systems within organizations as well. And um, I think it's important to think about that. Um, so many of the students who come to us at Niagara College are young adults and you still have a sense of optimism. And make sure to uh, make sure to keep that sense of optimism and intrinsic motivation. Kids, kids express it naturally. Don't, don't become jaded. Find, find the spaces and the places and the people who are going to support your motivation to keep moving forward. I'll leave you with one last quote here. Oh, those of you who have a background in um, Asian philosophy will recognize this is Lao Tzu. And Lao Tzu was the, um, he was an ancient philosopher in uh, the Chinese tradition and was the writer of the Tao Te Ching, which is one of the most great Chinese um, philosophical texts. At the center of your being, you have the answer. You know who you are and you know what you want. And honestly, I think that's a great way to leave this. Think about what motivates you and think about why you have that fire in your belly to do what you need to do. I, I'm going to leave you with these uh, questions to reflect on. Why did, why did you choose to study food science? I know from my own perspective, I kind of fell into food science. I didn't, I didn't know it was a discipline out there until I fell into it because a program that I had applied to had canceled and they, they said, well, you should go into food science. Um, but I'm really, really happy that I did find it because I really enjoy food, but I enjoy the analytical procedure of thinking through problems and um, I like the technical aspects of the, the nitty gritty of food science. What gets you motivated to study and learn? Um, I think everyone has that childlike curiosity that W. Edward Stemming uh, spoke about. I have always just been fascinated about food and I really enjoy thinking about food. I wake up in the middle of the night thinking about what I want to cook the next day. Um, and I am just, I'm just excited to think about food and experience food and talk to people about food. And as such, that's a really great motivator. And there are so many times where I've just being able to open books or have conversations with food people and that that autotelic time disappears and um, you just really really enjoy it has happened. I This is the sort of culture that I'm trying to create within the uh, culinary innovation and food technology program at the at Niagara College. Think about what types of motivation you respond best to. Perhaps the way your parents raised you um, influences the types of motivations that work for you or don't work for you. Um, in some cases, they may, uh, your parents or the, the people around you during your childhood may have used certain types of motivators and it has uh, created a, a positive or negative experience in your mind. And just take some time to think about which, which types of motivations work. Last but not least, this is my question for you for this week. How can we make online learning more motivating? How can we make sure that you take the time to watch the videos and respond to the assignments and really engage in the whole process. And that's an important question for me to ask you as you participate in this course. I am going to actually likely make this a question that we do some discussion board work on in the different courses that I'm teaching because last semester I realized was a new experience and online teaching is going to become the norm um, for the foreseeable future. Let's take some time to make sure that it works for all of us as a community, both the instructors as well as the students. All right, 
So be motivated and we're off to a great new start and a new semester and we'll talk to you soon.